friends, welcome back to this particular session. In this particular video, it's something different. Different in the sense that we are always considering about the theoretical approach. Now we are going to consider the practical part. So in this particular video, I am going to discuss with you the preparation of inorganic complex. So how to go about it? First thing is, I'll theoretically explain you all the steps involved in the preparation of the complex. And then I will be demonstrating you how exactly the, all the steps are going to be executed. Alright? So to begin with, we are here discussing about inorganic preparation and that preparation is of complex compounds. You know what are complex compounds, huh? Yes. It's made up of what? The metal ions as well as ligands. So to start with, any experiment always starts with an A. So the A over here is preparation of a complex and that is, I write it down in a very short form, so you understand this very well. It is Cu AC AC twice. Now your question is, what is AC is? It's acetyl acetonato. Okay, that is a complex of ligand along with this copper and it is bis. So that means the ligands are two. So that's why we say it is bis acetyl acetonato copper. The charge on copper is plus two. So that we are going to get a colored complex. Because if copper is in plus one state, you know it is going to be what? Colorless. Okay, so this is the aim of the experiment. The preparation of copper bis acetyl acetonato copper. Okay, it's a quantitative experiment. Because at the end of the day, we are going to measure, we are going to weigh the amount of the complex. So it's a quantitative experiment. Because mostly in chemistry, there are two types of experiments, qualitative as well as quantitative. Alright? So now, we step by step, I try to explain you. So please concentrate on it. Step number one, and that is, we are going to take around one gram of copper sulfate, which is along with five water molecule, and it has to be dissolved in minimum quantity of water, so that we get a concentrated solution of copper. So minimum quantity of water, it has to be dissolved. Alright? Now, this is when you talk about copper, so you understand, it's going to be a metal. What else do you require for a complex? Yes, the ligand. Okay? So ligand, or I also call it as a reagent. Now what is a reagent over here is? It is acetyl acetone. But then, it has to be in presence of ammonia solution. And it's a dilute ammonia. Dilution is done by means of water. So when ammonia is diluted with water, it becomes what? NH4OH. Alright? So the concentration of that is going to be around 1 to 4 NH4OH. Okay, so acetyl acetone is going to be in presence of 1 to 4 ammonium hydroxide. So that becomes a ligand solution or it becomes a reagent. Now, complex formation involves bonding between a metal and a ligand. So obviously, both these solutions has to be what? Mixed with each other. So, step number 3 will be to the copper solution, the reagent is being added. So, reagent or the ligand solution is being added to the copper to the solution and that results in a blue color precipitate. But my dear friends, this is not an addition reaction where we are going to get only one particular product and that product is going to be this. No. Okay, there will be some side product also, the byproduct also. And that byproduct will be in a soluble form. Okay, so as a result of this, the PPT is uniformly distributed. Alright, now we need to separate it. So that process is filtration. So in order to make sure that our filtration process becomes more effective, more easier, what we are going to do is before the filtration is carried out, we are trying our level best to separate the precipitate from that of the clear solution. And that particular step is digestion. So the next step is you need to digest this particular PPD which is along with the clear solution and that digestion process has to be carried out for around say 15 to 20 minutes. Okay now after the digestion process is over you can see that there will be a clear solution at the top and the blue colored PPD is going to settle down. So that's what I say that uh, filtration process becomes much more easier. So for that we are going to carry out the digestion process. Alright, so the next point is all about filtration. So we are going to filter 
this uh, PPT, not through an ordinary filter paper my dear friends, we are going to use one main filter paper and that is having a number that is 41, the number is related to the pore size. So filter paper number 41, the pore size is good enough so as to retain only the precipitate. Whereas the other byproducts which we don't require will be in a soluble form and that will pass out through that particular filter paper. Alright, next thing is we are going to carry out the washing. So washing of the PPT is to be done so that any foreign bodies are there we can remove this. So initially it is going to be done two or three times by making use of distilled water and finally we are going to carry out by means of a 2 to 3 cm cube of ethyl alcohol. Alright, so this is what the washing is being carried out so that whatever impurities are there, we try to remove it. Next, after the washing is being done, what we are going to do is the precipitate is being transferred on a wash glass. It has to be transferred what? On a wash glass, and then in an oven, we need to dry it at a temperature of around 110 to 120 degrees Celsius so that whatever water molecules are in now you know very well that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So 10 to 20 degrees Celsius extra if we keep heating so that the entire water molecules will be converted into vapor form and it will be vaporized. Okay? So it has to be carried out preferably in an oven so that the oven has a mechanism of setting the temperature so that our purpose is only to drive away the water molecules. Okay? Our purpose is not to decompose the precipitate, otherwise there will be loss in weight. And this will be a quantitative experiment, so that error will be introduced in this experiment. So we make sure that the heating has to be carried out at a controlled temperature. Okay, the, the ordinary burner doesn't have that provision, and that's why we need to carry out in a electrical oven. So the temperature, as you know, is 110 to 120 degrees Celsius. So that is what is being done. We also call it as a drying step. And once that is being done, you need to what wait. Okay, because as I said, it's going to be quantitative, so the weighing is very important and the weighing is being done of what? Of the complex that is AC, AC twice, this acetyl acetonate or copper. Okay, so these are the steps my dear friends. A quick recap of that. What we do is we take 1 gram of copper sulfate, which are 1 with 5 water molecule, in a beaker, dissolve it in minimum quantity of water, so we get a solution of that. Next thing is, we are going to take acetyl acetone, okay, and that is going to be what? Well, it is going to be 1 is to 4, and it's 4 OH, so it's going to be in a dilute form. Okay, now the reagent, how much is to be added? Okay, that is more important. So it's going to be around say, 5 to 6 cm cube of the reagent, okay, it has to be added into the copper solution. You get a blue color PPT. Once you get a PPT, you need to digest it on a water bath for around 15 to 20 minutes. Digestion, what will happen is the clear solution will be at the top and the PPT is going to settle down. So then, what filtering process becomes easier, effective enough, efficiency increases. How can it be done? Through a one filter paper number 41. Okay, next thing is what you do is you do the washing of this PPT through two or three times by distilled water and then finally the final washing is done with hot alcohol. Next, the PPT, okay, the washed PPT. It has to be transferred onto a wash glass, okay, and then it has to be heated at around say 110 to 120 degrees Celsius, and then finally it's going to be weighed in the form of base acetyl acetonate copper. Alright, so I hope you have understood all these steps very well. My dear friends, so you have understood the theoretical approach of what are the steps which has to be executed in the preparation of this particular complex. Now I will actually demonstrate to you okay, each and every step alright, so that you understand this concept very well. So we begin with the step number 1 and that was we are going to take 1 gram of copper sulfate 5H2O. So my dear friends, here it is, this is 1 gram of uh, copper sulfate. Now this we are going to introduce it into a beaker. Now as I said, in the procedure part that we are trying to dissolve it in minimum quantity of water. Okay, so we try to dissolve in minimum quantity of water. We need to constantly stir this so that the powder gets dissolved in this.
and you get a copper sulfate solution. And please remember, my dear friends, that this copper sulfate which we are talking about, so this is going to be copper in the plus two state, cupric state, and that is the reason it is going to be in a colored form. All right, so we have dissolved this, so we have got a solution of copper sulfate. Now, the next step, what we have is, this is a metal ion solution. Now, complex formation always takes place by the interaction between a metal ion and the ligand. So now, we have a ligand solution, and that ligand solution, which I already explained you, and that is acetyl acetone in presence of 1H24 of ammonium hydroxide. So, very slowly, carefully, drop by drop, by means of constant stirring. Okay, we are going to add it into this very slowly. So can you see now, it results in the formation of a blue color complex. Okay, and this is a bis acetyl acetonator copper 2 plus. Okay, this is what the complex formation has taken place. Can you check it out? Alright, previously we had a clear solution. Now on the interaction with the ligand, it results in the formation of a complex. Alright, so this was the next step. Now we move ahead. The interaction between the two has done, the complex formation has done. Now we carry out the process of what? Digestion. So now look at the arrangement of digestion. That is, we have a tripod stand, we have a water bar, this is a pipe plate triangle onto which the beaker has to be kept. So we now start up. We will put on the burner first of all. Yes, here we go. And now what we do is, we are going to put this beaker over this pipe clay triangle and we also make sure that the impurities doesn't go inside, so we will try to cover it up by making use of a filter, ordinary filter paper. So that making sure that no impurities go into this. So this is the way the digestion process is being carried out. And you know it very well, the digestion process has to be done for around 15 to 20 minutes. So digestion process is done, we will put off the burner. And now we will very slowly remove the beaker from this water bath. Alright? Now, the next process is what? Yes, filtration. So, we are going to use a Wattman filter paper number 41. I told you earlier that is the pore size is good enough so as to retain all the particles of the complex. Okay? So now, how to carry out this process, you need to fold it. See, this is what is the Wattman filter paper 41. So you fold it this way. Next, the another fold. Right? You got four sides, so three on one and one on one, so you get this way. Alright? And then, we are putting it on a funnel. Just try to make it a little bit wet. so that it sticks to the sides of the funnel. This is all through distilled water, my dear friends, please remember that. It's not ordinary water. Now, this is the precipitate that we have got after the digestion process. Now, we are going to filter it. So this is the way it is through the glass rod. We are going to do the filtration. Now we are going to add water so that we need to transfer each and every particle of the complex.
All right, so this is the way we are going to transfer each and every particle of the complex into this. So now once the washing is being done with water, as I told you in the instructions, that we are going to carry out some washing with 2 or 3 ml of alcohol, ethyl alcohol. So that's it, we are going to carry out with ethyl alcohol, the final washing. So this is about the filtration as well as the washing step. I hope you have understood up to this very well. Okay. So after the washing part is done with water as well as ethyl alcohol, we slowly remove this and put it on a wash glass. Okay, this is the way it is going to be, the product obtained on the wash glass, right? And now, the last step is about drying in an electric oven at a temperature of around 110 to 120 degrees Celsius. So, I will show you how to keep it in the electric oven. So, my dear friends, this is the electric oven we have. The temperature is already being set at our desired rate. Now, we are going to just open it. As well as she is being kept over here, and we are going to slowly put it inside. It's slightly hot, so slowly put it inside, and we are going to close it. So for another 45 minutes, it will take for the complete drying. I hope you have understood up to this step very anyway. well. So my dear friends, now I guess it will be, the product must be dried now, so we open the oven, we just check it out there, yes, our product is dried completely, so this is what it is, this acetyl acetonator copper no, is being formed, and this is the end of the experiment. And I hope you have understood right from step number one till the last step of preparation of bis acetyl acetonato copper.